Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Amongst the various military operations being carried out in the Star Wars galaxy, none is more dangerous than the ship boarding operation. There's many reasons why this is one of the most harrowing experiences a Marine could experience. So many things can go wrong here. The umbilical tunnel connecting the raider ship to the target ship could break, venting everyone into space. Or maybe an errant blaster bolt or detonator rips a hole in the hull, venting everyone into space. The conditions inside of a ship are usually not ideal for firefights either. There's hardly any cover and the hallways are cramped and cluttered. It's really every Marine's worst nightmare. And so today we'll be paying respects to these individuals by taking a look at the 10 best shipboarding scenes in Star Wars. We have to start off, of course, with the original original, the boarding of the Tantive IV, pretty much the first ever Star Wars scene that fans are treated to in the history of history. Darth Vader aboard his Star Destroyer Devastator has chased the Alderanian diplomatic vessel, the Tantive IV, from the Battle of Scarif to Tatooine. There was a tip-off from Vader himself that the Rebels have smuggled some secret blueprints onto this ship. Now, what starts off as just a routine traffic stop ends in tragedy when the rebels on board refuse to open the doors for Imperial security forces. And so a group of Vader's finest stormtroopers, AKA the Marines of the Empire, have to cut through the door. The rebels are waiting on the other side of the door lined up along the hallway. Unfortunately, when the Empire pulled them over, they didn't have enough time to really prepare defenses. And so most of these rebel troopers are crouched in the open caught like fish in a barrel. The first stormtroopers who get through the fatal funnel are gunned down, but a never-ending stream of heavily armored and armed bucketheads eventually made it past the first blockade. The ramming rebels are chased down throughout the ship and gunned down quickly. Their sidearms are no match for the stormtroopers E-11s, but they hold out long enough for R2-D2 to escape with the blueprints. Next up is the aforementioned incident involving the Tent of Four during the Battle of Scarif. During the Rebel Raid on Scarif, the Rebel capital ship Profundity acquires the blueprints for the Death Star space station from a Rebel commando unit who infiltrated the Imperial archives on the planet. Soon after Rebel commandos complete their mission, they, along with thousands of Imperial soldiers, are wiped out when Wilhelm Tarkin arrives on scene with a Death Star and fires on the Imperial compound. Then Darth Vader jumps out of hyperspace with his Devastator and proceeds to take apart any Rebel ship who has not yet jumped out of the system. The Profundity, which has those really important blueprints on board, is quickly disabled by the Star Destroyer. Luckily, the Profundity had one functional ship in its hangar, and that was the Tantive IV. Now, it didn't actually take part in the Battle of Scarif because it was undergoing repairs, and the crew barely got the ship powered up before Darth Vader and his soldiers boarded the Profundity. While the rest of the Imperial troopers were securing the ship, Darth Vader went directly after the Tantive IV once it was clear that the Rebels were gonna use it to escape. What ensues is one of the most terrifying boarding sequences in all of Star Wars. The Fatal Funnel, which would eviscerate your average point man, becomes essentially a game of Beat Saber for Darth Vader as he continuously blocks back blaster bolts and rips apart rebel soldiers in a glorious march of death. The only problem is Darth Vader was perhaps a bit too fancy with his moves and he is unable to stop the rebels from escaping with the blueprints. While the Tantive four boarding sequences will remain some of the best in Star Wars history, the boarding and destruction of the Vutan Pala Lucra Hulk battleship is probably going to be one of the most impressive boarding sequences. During the blockade in Naboo, the Vutan Pala served as the main droid control ship for the entire Trade Federation droid army. Back in those days, the Ohm series battle droids, precursor to the B1, still had to be controlled remotely via a powerful central computer. Queen Amidala and her allies realized that the Vutan Pala needed to be destroyed for her forces to have a chance in succeeding in retaking their planet. The odds for this mission were not great. Essentially, you had a few Royal Naboo pilots and N1 starfighters going up against a massive Trade Federation battle fleet. 
By luck, Anakin Skywalker, the young Force-sensitive, happened to be hiding in an N1 starfighter in the middle of a firefight in the Royal Naboo hangar. Anakin accidentally activated the autopilot on the starfighter, which took him directly into orbit and into the dogfight above Naboo. Anakin Skywalker, who is also an excellent pod racer, accidentally flies inside of the Bhutan Pala and then accidentally fires a pair of proton torpedoes directly at the main reactor, which sets off an explosion that destroys the entire ship. This ends up disabling the entire droid army on the planet, giving the Naboo and their Gungan allies the W. On a side note, during the Battle of Umbara, three members of the 501st are inspired by Anakin's exploits and pull off their own Bhutan Pala style mission using stolen Umbaran starfighters. A lot of people hate on the scene in which General Princess Senator Leia Organa Solo gets vented into space by Kylo Ren and then magically floats back afterwards. While this might seem like an over-the-top scene, there are some reasons why this works. For one, Princess Leia is actually trained in the Force. Apparently Luke said that she was the more powerful one. So using the Force to guide oneself back onto a ship is not impossible. Because in the vacuum of space, there should theoretically be the Force, because it's everywhere. Except inside of the using Bong, because they're ugly. Also, vacuum isn't as dangerous as people make it out to be. I mean, obviously you can't breathe in vacuum, and if you hold your breath when uh, you know your spaceship decompresses, your lungs will explode. But if you manage to keep your wits about you and reorient yourself once you're outside the ship, you can survive for as long as you can stay conscious without air. Even the extreme cold of space isn't that big of a problem because there is no liquid or gas to serve as a medium for energy transfer. For instance, you can survive being in a sauna that's 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but if you enter water at the same heat, you're probably going to burn off your skin. Without a medium like water or air, you could probably survive even more extreme temperatures. The only difficult part about Leia's move here is the fact that she's vented out of the Rattus. We have no idea how fast the ship is moving in the opposite direction. Now, Leia's journey back to the Rattus is pretty impressive, but I have another space flight here that I believe deserves to be on the list. And that is Iden Versio's very impressive spaceship transfer. Iden Versio is a member of the Special Forces unit known as Inferno Squad. She purposely gets captured by the Rebel Alliance in order to get rid of some intercepted Imperial transmissions that have fallen into Rebel hands. Not only does she skillfully infiltrate the ship and complete her mission, her escape is nothing short of legendary. Instead of just stealing a shuttle or X-Wing and risk getting shut down, Iden Versio vents herself out of an airlock and somehow her personal ship, the Corvus, appears out of hyperspace at exactly the right time, and she safely flies right through its hangar door. Any miscalculation by either party would have resulted in Iden Versio being lost forever in space or smacking into the side of the Corvus at extremely high speeds. During the Battle of Devron, Anakin Skywalker attempts to board Cad Bane's munificent class star frigate in one of the most audacious strategies we've seen him pull off yet. After taking out Cad Bane's ship's power converters, Anakin devises a boarding strategy using three brigades of clone troopers from the 501st. Instead of using jetpacks or gunships, the clones will instead board one of the many ATTE walkers on board of their Venator class Star Destroyer. Not only are these tanks pressurized so that they can operate in vacuum, they also have magnetic clamps on their feet to keep them tethered to the outside of the hull of another ship. The same gravity that assisted those bombs from The Last Jedi also assisted the ATTE's slow descent down onto Cad Bane's ship. The second the tanks land, they started opening fire, and clone troopers began finding a way to enter the ship. Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi had boarded many ships, usually trying to save someone on board. They boarded the Malevolence and a beat-up freighter to save Padme from Grievous. Obi-Wan jet-packed onto a Separatist cruiser to save Anakin from Dooku. But the coolest boarding we've seen this duo pull off was during the Battle of Coruscant, when Anakin and Obi-Wan fly right into the Invisible Hand on their two ETA Actus Light Interceptors. Not only do they barely manage to make it into the hangar, they also both bail out of their ships while sliding on the hangar floor, resulting in some very epic transfers from pilot mode to lightsaber mode. Perfectly executed. The Tranquility was a Venator class Star Destroyer tasked with taking Trade Federation leader Newt Gunray to Coruscant for war crimes. The Confederacy of Independent Systems sent a Sage Ventress and a team of droids to board the ship while it's in transit. The droids approach the Republic ship in specialized assault pods that drill right through the hull of the Venator. And so instead of appearing out of the airlock, which could be easily defended, battle droids begin falling out of the ceilings in the hangar and quickly outnumber the clone station on the ship. 
These separatist breaching pods work in the same way as the ones used on Camino. They're very terrifying and very effective. When Ray and Finn steal the Millennium Falcon, they have no idea what they're piloting. In their defense, they're too busy trying to outrun the First Order's TIE fighters. But shortly after shaking some bucket heads off their tail, their newly acquired freighter is caught by a tractor beam from an even larger freighter, the Baleen class bulk freighter, which does look like a whale and swallows the Millennium Falcon in one large gulp. Once in the grasp of the larger ship, Ray Finn and BB-8 have no choice but to hide beneath one of the floor grates on the Millennium Falcon. Shortly after, a gray-haired Corellian and his Wookiee buddy re-entered their beloved ship for the first time in a long time. This was one of the few great moments in all of the sequel trilogy. Our last shipboarding operation is probably the strangest. After the second battle of Geonosis, a large Geonosian hive was found beneath the planet along with a massive queen Geonosian. This queen was using a small parasitic worm to invade the minds of her subjects and control them like drones. Even after the queen was destroyed by Republic forces, these parasites of hers remain active. The TP-73 was a Pelta-class medical frigate scheduled to take off from Geonosis after the second battle of Geonosis. A group of clones and Jedi Commander Sokotano were scheduled to make a stop at the medical station of Ord Cestus, but en route it was discovered that several clone troopers had been infected by brain parasites. These individuals quickly started subduing and infecting other members of the ship until they had complete control. Thankfully, Sokotano was quick thinking enough to dump the ship's coolant into the hallways of the ship, which halted the parasites from continuing to spread. So there you have it guys, 10 spectacular ship boarding operations from Star Wars. Let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite and also let me know if I've missed your favorite and it's just not on this list. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.